if there are uh, questions and remarks, so we can have a look at it. I think uh, I think I uh, share it. Everybody sees the padlet. I'll work it. Uh, so we have a few questions of the disponibility of the documents presented in this uh, presentation. And uh, the answer is yes, everybody will uh, receive it uh, tomorrow. And the report will be, of the meeting will be made available for uh, all interested. And uh, then uh, we have a question of uh, the, on the first presentation of uh, uh, Katalina, my uh, heroine, uh, who are the representative of member states according to the uh, professional qualification uh, directive. And uh, I will let Katalina answer it, if possible. I think uh, normally uh, it will be the Ministry of Education, for example, what's happening in Greece. This is the Ministry of Education that is dealing and there are representatives that are dealing really with the, uh, uh, to know us and to help us what are the, the requirements of a professional qualification. I uh, cannot say if this will be the same in other countries. So I think uh, there is already um, a list uh, of uh, we can we can send it to you for the representatives in each countries that the member state can uh, ask and help. So if anyone list, we can send it to him. Thank you. Uh, there's a comment uh, from uh, Kiju uh, Le Leuven, Belgium. It's interesting. Uh, it's very interested in uh, starting a recognized degree in landscape architecture and uh, happy to be involved in the possibilities of uh, the common training framework. And okay. uh, Maria Beatrice Andreucci is asking if, if uh, the IFLA EU map, the different professional issue uh, that landscape architectures uh, face in a different country. Mm -hmm. And uh, you already answered in the chat. Yes. Uh, that, uh, yes. Uh, yes, indeed. Uh, I'll let you, yes, if you want to. Um, yes, basically this uh, survey, uh, the intention, the PRA survey, the intention is was to map somehow the role of uh, landscape architect in each country and the, the role of the association, the problems that they face and probably the opportunities and if uh, our country is regulated, which steps they have follow in order to present us a very good example, as a good practice. So, this was basically the attention. So far, we got a lot of information and in some countries they have already replied in which sector a landscape architect can be involved. Some others, they didn't. So uh, anyway, all this information that will be, as I said, uh, gathered in the report that we're working now. Uh, it, the report will be delivered to delegates and delegates are going to send it to their national association to be available in all members. Uh, thank you, Katerina. Now we'll pass with uh, comments on the professional qualification director, uh, directive and uh, common uh, train, uh, training framework by, uh, presented by Fritz and Marina. Ellen Fetzer, I don't, uh, I think it's a comment for, uh, or a question for this session. I was wondering if for a much wider future, if we, or whoever else uh, should rather try to define uh, quality criteria for the outcomes of uh, our work. So measuring the outcome and uh, impact, not necessarily who does it. And uh, if Fritz and Marina could answer. Uh, I, I, I cannot uh, answer to this question because it, it's not directly related to, uh, I feel it's not directly related to, to the presentation I gave about uh, yeah. It's more a general question, general. yes. And and the second, uh, so I, I can pass it. Uh, it. The second one is: is it generally approved? So the question is: what is generally? It is approved by IFLA World in the World Council in uh, in September, and it can not be approved officially by. Uh, by ELO because the process of modification is starting now. But as far as we uh, could do, it is, uh, it is agreed. So the next thing is uh, Sophia Mears, EU landscape architects can cross and work 
as employees of work. Yes, you, you can work as employee, but uh, if you are an employee, you are not officially in the list, you must not be in the list because your patron has to have uh, the official uh, registration. So it's it's not a, a, a problem to be an employee. This is regulated, the national regulations determine how to set up a business practice in your own name. That's not true. If there is no regulation, then there is no problem. Everyone can set up a practice. Uh, in, in reality, there are still problems because uh, other professions uh, take the place and don't allow that uh, landscape architecture are acting. So this is, um, I don't know. So the next question. The next, uh, next question, I think, is maybe more for Katerina again. Uh, does EU or IFLA Europe have statistics about the numbers of EU landscape architects, individual or uh, practices that have cross border or work across borders? I think I have answered, but anyway, my question, my answer might have been general, but I think covers this. The figures that, uh, as we can understand, IFLA Europe has is the members the number, the number of members of the associations that are members of uh, the federation. So there might be members in national associations that are not registered in, in their associations. There are countries like that. So we cannot have the whole picture. So uh, this is what we have so far. But uh, Katarina, uh, yeah. the question was, uh, do we have... Uh, yeah, no, has, no, uh, no numbers we don't have. No, no, we don't. This is where my, it was my general, more general. Uh, Heroin de Vries, who should uh, go for regulation in each country? Uh, so uh, there, uh, somebody has to be active. Uh, normally it should be the National Association uh, that uh, looks as uh, the uh, uh, profession gets uh, this regulation. Uh, in some countries, this did happen, like Czech Republic, Slovenia, Slovakia. And uh, so I have the impression that uh, sometimes uh, the ministries don't care about. So somebody has to tell them uh, and uh, to force them. Somebody you have, sometimes you have restrictions. But anyway, uh, I think it is a good um, solution that the national associations um, are active and if the Europe uh, uh, offers also help uh, if there is help needed to go to ministries or to somebody else. But I think Katarina can tell about. Uh, yes, this was actually uh, the idea of um, trying to work on this survey, as I said because the idea is, was to understand the, the, the problems, the real problems that the association have, and in the future to be more uh, accurate on our assistance and uh, to have a base at least on uh, working and discussing with the association. So I, I want only to, to add something what Cherian said before. Uh, I think it's important because um, so those countries who are not in the European Union executive said, why do we need a CTF? I think uh, Cherion said it very, very clear, that this is a positive effect for all, not only for those who are in the European Union. It could uh, be that uh, we get by this uh, instrument, the, uh, article 49a, the uh, automatic recognition, but also for all countries which are in if uh, Europe uh, Union uh, in the uh, scope, uh, which is uh, uh, much more. I think it is a very uh, helpful uh, 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 instrument uh, for education, and and this is important that we transport also to. Uh, so those countries who are not in the European Union said uh, a CTF is helpful for all. Uh, thank you. Uh, there's a, I 
think uh, a comment on the first question of Ellen Fetzer about uh, the possibility of agreeing on landscape quality standards and make sure we get there by any means. But I, maybe uh, Margarita, Margarita or Heroin can answer it. And there was uh, some there was some question about the blue blue book that was uh, edited by Michael Damming and uh, IFLA Europe has it in uh, its uh, archive. And there's a link uh, of, um, of uh, this uh, document. And I think uh, there's also uh, on the um, new definition of uh, landscape architect uh, sent by, by IFLA Europe, somebody from IFLA Europe. And you have also the, the links here that you can um, access on the blue book and the de definition. And, sorry, I hope. And uh, uh, Veli also has a question that uh, Jeroen uh, answered already about uh, the process of uh, guideline uh, revision that uh, started this uh, meeting. And uh, I don't know if Jeroen uh, Margarida want to make any comments on the general question or documents? No, for me it's clear at the moment, yeah. Okay. Maybe something about the uh, Ellen um, comment? Yeah, I... About I, the criteria of the outcomes and not of the... Yeah, there, there was one general comment of Ellen, uh, but maybe it comes later on uh, whether it should not be too restrictive and um, how it would serve. Because sometimes if you have guidelines that people will follow it very strict and then if society changes or the profession changes, then uh, you're trapped within the framework. And I think that we should be very careful uh, to how we define things and how we define competences and also how we define the role of this common training framework in order to prevent this. Mm -hmm. um, and there was one other thing Alan stated is that uh, it would be good to define standards uh, mm -hmm. for education, but maybe she can explain a bit more what she means by that because- uh, standards. From landscape on landscape quality. Yeah. Ellen, could you explain or? I think the the comment from Elzelina van Mele from Denmark. It's a, it's a, a supporting this idea. We can see that many frameworks and definition from before got ra rather quickly outdated. For example, the A class guidance from uh, two thousand ten. Uh, need also to be updated now only 10 years after and the uh, landscape uh, architecture profession definition from uh, 2008. How flexible for update the common training fragment will be? Isn't there a risk to get stuck in 10 years with a frame that needs to be updated again? Be ready and able to update it re regularly. Well, in, uh, in my idea it would be that you have to define very precisely what you put into the framework and what you put into the other documents who are more flexible. So because we have, of, of course, access guidance uh, uh, that could be on top of it and the uh, IFLA uh, specifications and we have our work shed with uh, tools. Uh, so, so we should make sure that we're not, uh, well, uh, old fashioned uh, within two or three years, but evidently I, th I think a timeline of 10 years is not too bad for updating. Because if we look at the changes in education, uh, when we finished the ECLAS guidance in 2010 and until now, we see a lot of changes in research requirements. We see changes in the bachelor programs we see a lot of changes in what society wants with uh, collaborative design, uh, with uh, food justice and all kinds of uh, social changes. So I think in 10 years, well, I, I cannot imagine what will be there then. 
So I think the framework should be at least general, but uh, really define the scope clearly. But I think we should be ready for updating anything uh, in another 10 years, but maybe other people have other ideas about that. May I? I think if uh, I agree, yes, I, think, I, I think for the, the last 10 years we use the recognition documents and they were very useful, but it's a very fast changing world. Uh, we continue to insist very much in design, in the curricula, because it's our communication, one of our communication ways, but we are aware that now we have uh, broader um, concerns like risks, for instance, uh, we, are, we must deal with the coastal risks, fires, floods, so on. So uh, we must adapt. But I think 10, I agree with your own. Uh, 10 years, it was very good to have uh, these references and uh, we must face uh, maybe some minor changes, but to think in future uh, for a period like this. Uh, thank you, Margarita. I think uh, we have another comment uh, also from Elzelina. Have anyone been looking at the possible negative impacts on uh, a, a common training framework could have by fixing restrictive uh, criteria for education, diversity, innovation, and by standardization of our practice, practice in a context uh, where innovation and flexibility and transformation in learning in research and practices is very much required to be able to address global issues in climate change. Standardization, education and practices in uh, landscape architecture worries me a little. Yeah, I, I, I agree uh, that, uh, well, maybe this is a very good suggestion and maybe we should do a risk assessment uh, during the Innerland project. Just uh, look at the other side and what could be a negative effect. And um, this also relates to what Ellen mentioned on the standardization. And Ellen is back now, so uh, maybe you can explain what you mean by the quality standards, Ellen. Uh, yeah, sorry, um, also welcome from a class um, and my mic was muted, which is why, why you couldn't hear me speaking. No, um, I, I just wanted to say um, not about standardization. Um, so I'm fine with the framework and that we keep on working on it. The European qualification framework is also very general, I think, in the way we can uh, describe what we want. So it will be flexible and, uh, and adaptable. But I think we have another elephant in the room, which is out there as a much bigger problem, which is the quality of our landscape and how we measure if it is sustainable or more sustainable if it's um, if, if, if it has seen interventions by us. So there's a big uh, package I think we still need to work on uh, for the broader role and relevance of what we do for the landscape as a whole, uh, how we define sustainability, how do we measure the impact of what we are doing, how do we, we define progress. So this is, um, I mean, it's a different uh, package and we won't solve it, of course, within this project, but I see that um, for me, this is the bigger problem compared to what we discuss here, but, um, but I'm fine and um, I well, think we will have a good outcome. <laughs> but but I, I think um, what I found interesting in the other uh, common training frameworks, what, uh, which I saw, is that there's also a section on the ethical aspects of the profession and also the values you have and the way you approach your, uh, well, the things you work on. And I think that's something, uh, of course, many uh, national associations and uh, architectural uh, chambers, they have a code of conduct, but I think we should also look in the, within the framework of developing this framework also at our values and our approach and the way we deal with sustainability. Uh, exactly, yeah, it's because uh, sustainability is mentioned quite often also in the IFLA framework, of course it's a short document, but it would, it would be good if we have maybe um, some joint understanding of how we, yeah. how we see sustainability. have a session on this uh, yeah. on the 26th of February. Yeah. Okay, and there is so, um, a comment from Richard Stiles. I think it is important to remember and respect the principles of EU uh, tuning the project. This was uh, concerned to avoid a rigid standardization of education from top down and to retain maximum academic freedom in education. 
The goal of tuning was uh, to harmonize education from the bottom up. This was done uh, by de defining competencies, learning outcomes, rather than defining detail how this should be achieved. I think it, uh, yeah. it approached a little bit the comments of- I, th I, think, I think that coincides with everything that's just been said actually. So I think that's reassuring that everybody is saying uh, we ought to be flexible and that's what it's about. Okay, I think uh, this is about it. I don't know if uh, there are any other questions and everybody, does anybody want to, to put a question directly? Uh, yes, there's a couple of things that I would like to add. Uh, as much as I was reading these European regulative documents, so um, I found in them that there should be some criteria why the profession needs common training framework, because there are many professions, you know around us and they all, all are in their sense they are important and they also might say okay we also need a CTF so I found two criteria that might be supporting our claims for the common training framework the first one is public safety and the second is public health if we could be addressing these criteria then we could explain why landscape architects activities are important and they should be specifically regulated because to a certain extent, it's also a limitation to the market. We should also look from that perspective. And then concerning the regulation, there were very good co uh, comments by the colleagues concerning the, uh, the, the scope of regulation. So uh, we could imagine that in, in legal area, we have a different types and different level of legal acts. Let's say we have constitution, then below that we have law, below that we have standard, and even below that we have guidelines. So it seems that we are missing the constitution now and we are not going to put very small and very detailed things in constitution so it is not outdated very fast. This is my vision. And of course we can update the, uh, the regulation of the other layers like the education guideline and some other standards. Thank you. Daras, there's anybody else who wants to address a question or a comment? May I? Yes, Sarah, please, please, Margarita. May I add to your proposition health and safety, security yeah. issues. And uh, I agree also with Jeroen uh, telling about uh, immaterial values. Uh, some programs don't address very much uh, this, uh, the, the sense of the place and the uh, inspiration and the uh, aesthetical. Uh, aspects, so we must uh, um, look to these uh, immaterial values uh, too, and ethical, of course, as you mentioned. Uh, thank you, Margarita. So I think we can uh, close this uh, part of question and uh, and uh, take a break and maybe. Uh, and come back later. I think the next word is to Gintaras. It was my pleasure to be part of this session and uh, listen for so many colleagues from different countries and different schools talking about uh, the very important thing for all of us. Uh, sometimes in our general assemblies, we don't have enough time to speak about this, and now it's the appropriate moment when we need to address important things. And address them very seriously. As you see, we have European regulation documents and we have, uh, on the other hand, we have real situations on the ground in different countries, in different schools, in different associations that you also should take into account. Finding a, a balance between being very restrictive and very, very top-down directive. Uh, CTF should be also minding the situation bottom, which is coming from bottom up and being just a general guide, guidance document, a sort of a, we can compare to a constitution. So it's a process and we are very happy that you are part of that process. We invite you to look uh, and to mind all our invitations. And as you see, the next meeting will be at the end, in the end of uh, February. We will continue working on that. Probably until this moment, we will have draft for some drafts already for the CTFs, so let's say the structure, the, the legally regulated aspects that should be addressed and, and some other issues. So thank you for the session. Uh, you are welcome to write your 
your comments in this in this document which is open and uh, we will also make available the record of, of our session today so you can share it with your colleagues maybe who are not connected today thank you <laughs>